out with the old, in with the new, will Dino replace Node? Let's see. First off, it's pronounced Dino, like Dino the Dinosaur. Dino is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. It's a general purpose JavaScript and TypeScript programming environment. It's basically a new way to write server-side JavaScript. It was created by Ryan Dahl, who is actually the creator of Node.js. Why would you create a product that directly competes with your former product? Well, here's a quote from Ryan Dahl. Node could have been much nicer, and that's from 10 things I regret about Node.js. Dino was built using Rust TypeScript, and it uses the Chrome V8 engine. It addresses several design flaws of Node.js. One of the big things is that TypeScript is built in. So there is no need for a TypeScript config file. But that doesn't mean that you're forced to use TypeScript. Since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, you can simply write JavaScript if that's your preference. One huge difference between Node and Dino is security. Dino is secure by default. Everything is locked down. You have to pass specific flags to enable access to only what is absolutely necessary to run your code. This prevents unintentional security holes. Another difference is Dino uses ECMAScript modules. So instead of using require like we do in Node, you would use import. This is one thing that affects the use of NPM modules in Dino. Now it is possible to use NPM modules in Dino, but they have to be converted if they use require or other unsupported features in Dino. Now in Dino projects, there is no node modules folder. Modules are cached and used globally for any projects that require them. Now this doesn't mean that Dino requires an always on internet connection. When packages are referenced, they are downloaded and cached, very similar to how NPM modules work. They are just not stored in each project directly. You can also point to a local folder that houses the module that you're importing. It doesn't have to live on the internet. Another awesome feature of Dino is that it has native async binding for top level promises. That means that at the top level, you don't have to declare async before a promise. You can just await it. Now, if you're working within a function that is not at the top level, then you would have to use the standard async await syntax. One small thing that we might take for granted is Dino has fetch built in. There are no modules needed. So that just makes it nice out of the box. Another thing about Dino is that it has a Windows object, which is awesome. This allows for interoperability between browser and server side code. And this is great for developers. Now, there are several ways to install Dino. So let's go to the official website here, dino.land. And you can see here that we could install it using the shell or using PowerShell. So I'm gonna install it using PowerShell. And then I can just create a JavaScript file here. And I'm just gonna console log something. Now to run it, we just say Dino run and then the name of the file. And there we go. And we could also take this more complex example here from their website and let's try that one out. So here we're importing a server module from Dino and we're assigning the port to 8000. Then we're just gonna console log that port. And then here we see the example here of a top level async in action. So we don't have to declare async, we can just await and then we're going to pass to the request response a body of hello world. And now you'll see that we get an error here, uncaught permission denied, network access to, and then local host. So what we need to do is add the flag allow net. And now it's working. So this simply creates a web page with hello world. So will Dino replace node? So one issue that I see is a lack of module support. But Dino hasn't even officially released. So I'm sure that we'll see this grow quickly. Currently, Dino has support for standard modules that do not have any external dependencies and they have been reviewed by the Dino core team. Here's a quote from their website. The intention is to have a standard set of high quality code that all Dino projects can use fearlessly. So if we look here at their website, we can see they have these standard modules and they also have third party modules. And we can also use pika.dev to find even more modules. So we're still at the very beginning of Dino land. 
it's hard to say what will become of Node and Dino. Now, Dino looks promising, but we'll have to wait and see what the adoption rate is once it officially releases. With so many developers using and used to Node, I'm not sure how quickly they're gonna to want to move over to Dino, if at all. The issue that I see is that there is no one feature that stands out to me that makes me want to use Dino over Node. I'm currently happy with the way that Node works for me. But again, we'll have to wait and see what the community thinks. If a lot of people jump on board, then this could take off very quickly. Of course, it's not gonna replace Node overnight. Currently, Dino is in release candidate two, so it is going to officially release very soon, maybe even this week. Let me know what you think about Dino in the comments below. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.